Jeff Frick here with the Cube. We are on the ground at Gordon Beers Brewery in San Jose, California, and we're joined in this segment by Dan Gordon, founder of Gordon Beers. You may have guessed that by the name. Dan, thanks for having us down. Pleasure to be here. So I saw Dan speak a couple weeks back, and uh, and really some fascinating things about his story that I wanted to follow up, and I thought were were curious. The, the first one was really, you know, you were very specific, mentioned over and over of the German purity laws and how you really stick to those. Yet we're here in the middle of Silicon Valley. You've had this company going for a while, so. And, and we're surrounded by a whole bunch of technology and innovation here. So talk about how do you combine those two and marry them to be successful? Well, it's old school traditions combined with modern technology and that enables us to execute and can create consistency and excellence uh, the way they had hoped they had could have done it uh, in back in the 1800s. So it's really more execution of the goal versus the kind of the underlying recipe. Absolutely, but will. still with the same underlying rules of only using four ingredients, malt, hops, water, and yeast to make the purest beer. It's great. So another thing that you mentioned that I thought was pretty interesting was, you know, big things that influenced your life and who you are today. And two of them that you mentioned, the first one was really going to Germany and spending a semester abroad. So I wonder if you could talk specifically about, you know, kind of how you made that decision and looking back at it, how important was that decision? Well, I always wanted to study abroad. My parents were uh, kind enough to take us to Europe a few times when I was in high school. And uh, I loved German beer even at the age of 15, under parental supervision, of course. And uh, I said, okay, I wanted to go uh, study someplace. And I took German classes when I was an undergrad at Cal. And then with the intent of going, uh, doing the junior abroad. And luckily I was able to, uh, to capitalize on some exposure I had thumbing through a, a catalog of all the different fields of study at the German university system and saw brewing engineering and beverage technology. And I said, bingo, that's what I was put on earth to do. So, so keep an eye on that. For, uh, for all those aspiring people looking for a major, right? That's about it, yes. Go to Germany, <laughs> get a brewery. It, it's just, you connect the two dots there. It's perfect. So the other thing that you mentioned I thought was pretty interesting was really your experience at Cal being on the crew team. We're often referred to as ESPN of tech. We cover a lot of tech events. We're huge sports fans. But you mentioned, you know, that being part of that team really had a big influence on you. And, and I wish you could uh, dive into that a yeah, little bit more. I, I think the entrepreneurial aspect of, of being a rower um, and the discipline involved with, with rowing and the fact that there are minimal amount of rewards and a ton of work that goes into it uh, is going to put you in a good position to succeed in life as a whole. And uh, applying that to the discipline that I had from rowing um, and becoming an entrepreneur, I think we're instrumental. So uh, the other funny thing you mentioned was as simple as the four uh, ingredients that make beer. There's a whole lot of heavy duty science that goes on behind the scenes and we're surrounded by beakers and, and, all, and microscopes and all kinds of things. So I wonder if you could talk a little bit about how that works out. It's a very simple formula and yet the science behind it is not simple at all. Yeah, there's a lot of biochemistry that goes into uh, brewing and it starts off biochemistry and I say microbiology are the two uh, foundation uh, scientific uh, disciplines that are involved in brewing. Uh, from the time that you're harvesting the barley to, uh, to creating it into malt, which involves uh, har harnessing the power of enzymes that are naturally occurring in the malted barley, um, to, to the yeast as our most important employee, and creating the flavor profiles that are signature to German style beers. Um, all of that ties in very uh, into a complex network of, of science that, that we apply towards maintaining consistency and adapting and creating this, the real high level of consistency and flavor profiles that we need in brewing. So were you already a science guy or did the beer drag you in? I was a, a geeky science guy. I went to Homestead High School and we had an amazing physics and, uh, and math uh, science background there. The teachers were incredible. A lot of Stanford and Cal uh, instructors that were doing a, a labor of love by teaching there. And I was very fortunate to have an exceptional background starting at that at an early age. And give a little shout out to the Mustangs, some of the other uh, great Mustang alums from that era. Uh, go Tangs, you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm probably number four in the, the higher of, of the success uh, factors for the for the people there. Well, Jobs and Wozniak, I think, uh, are leapfrogs, uh, you know, ahead of us in, as far as success goes, right? And who's number three? Um, Bob's golf. Yeah, Bob's golf. <laughs> there you go. That <laughs> so the other thing that, that you mentioned uh, what I saw a few weeks ago is really the impact of the law and I think a lot of entrepreneurs don't necessarily maybe think about laws to the degrees that they that, that they should and it was actually a change in the law you mentioned that enabled Gordon Biersch to exist as a brew pub in the first place right. and then it was a change in another law that then took away that uh, opportunity so yeah, it was interesting <laughs> uh, in 1984 when I was in grad school uh, the laws enabled uh, brewery restaurants to come into existence that, that basically bypass 
across the uh, three-tier system of manufacturer to distributor to retailer to consumer. So those are the three pathways that are, are, are generally required. And uh, the law change in 84 to allow a brewery restaurant to sell directly to the uh, consumer in the, over the counter, more or less, in the form of draft beer. And that was uh, enabled us to, to, to build our first brewery restaurant in Palo Alto back in, uh, in 1987, open up in 1988. And then subsequently, they, uh, the distributors lobbied to change the laws again to allow hard liquor to be served. And at the same time, they limited the number of brewery restaurants that you could own. So we ended up getting throttled back and split the company into two. So you've been at it for a while now. So if, when you go to Cal, and I'm sure they have you over there quite a bit, and you, and you look out over the uh, the young entrepreneurs, you know, with the benefit of hindsight, what are some of the tips and advice you give to the the guys? Well, n number one, whenever I'm I'm speaking to uh, to business school students and entrepreneurship students, is uh, primarily you got to get hands-on experience. It's amazing how naive the youth of America is and thinking they can grab and just jump into a uh, venture without having done any homework and any uh, due diligence as far as getting hands-on experience. So that's number one. And They're and all drinking beer, so they got they, that they, Yeah, everyone's a beer <laughs> expert, right? <laughs> At the age of 16, you're a beer expert that's these right. days. <laughs> That's it? Just get hands-on experience? Uh, number one, yeah. The, the rest of it will come. I mean, you either have the ability to be an entrepreneur and you can handle the risk stress and uh, the risk factors, or you can't. I mean, you're going to have to be bred for that part. Yeah. Uh, you can learn it, and both, most entrepreneurs are risk takers, but at the same time, they're calculated risk takers and try to prepare for battle as best you can. So getting that experience is number one, and I think that's the, uh, the, the oversight. And getting cross-training and, and accounting and, and basic business expertise is also important. And what about the passion? Did the passion, was it there? Did it come? Can you do it without passion? No, Can you, you develop the passion? You clearly, have, there's two things that you have to be to, to be successful, and that's passion and authenticity. Without those two, you're not going to be able Those are the buzzwords at every business school. Um, you, you can't be half-assed. So, Dan, thanks for coming on. Any, uh, any final thoughts before we sign out here? We're going to go over to the tasting room. It's 5 o'clock somewhere yeah, uh, over we, here. We have a lot of tuition payments <laughs> in the Gordon family, so please uh, drink a lot of Gordon beer. beer. <laughs> All right, great. So, again, Jeff Frick here on the ground with Dan Gordon. We're in downtown San Jose at the Gordon Beers Brewery. You're watching The Cube. Thanks for watching.